Okay viewers, welcome again to computer networking classes. In previous video we had discussed about RDT 2.1, 2.2 and 3.0. So in this video we will be talking about drawbacks of RDT 3.0 and some pipelining techniques. So firstly we have to start our video with what are the drawbacks of RDT 3.0 which is totally based on countdown timers. So as we can see that although RDT is functionally correct protocol, it is unlikely that anyone would be happy with its performance because its performance is so low and it will take time for a packet to send from east coast of America to other uh, coast. Uh, two hosts are running at one at east coast and another on west coast so total time taken will be 30.0008 and uh, the on means the only time when real transmission happens is 0.0008 else uh, the remaining 30 milliseconds the hosts have to wait so as we can see that here so this is the form of rdt means packet 0 is gone and acknowledgement is received only then packet 1 1 will be sent so talking about more real scenario if any packet is lost so then it has to wait for the timeout to be end then only the next packet will be sent means retransmission in more real scenario if any acknowledgement is lost then there will be duplicity of packets which is packet 1 is duplicate, duplicate at the receiving end and then also it will take the timer to be end then only the retransmission will happen and if acknowledgement is delayed at the transmission then it will be a huge mess as you can see that so to overcome this we had come with a unique concept called pipelining so what is pipelining is that we send the more than one packets means multiple packets are sent at one time okay so long range of sequence number is needed for multiple packets to be sent and buffer size should be maintained for unagged packets protocols like go back and and selective repeats are used so these are two approaches used to control the number of packets and retransmission techniques so talking about go back and which is gbn so here sender is allowed to transmit multiple packets without waiting for ACK okay so multiple packets are sent in such a way set like uh, if we are using stop and wait so then one packet will be sent when acknowledgement is received only then the next packet will be sent but in go back and multiple packets are sent and when acknowledgement is received for one then only it will send other packets okay so as you can see that multiple packets are sent at the same time when where only one packet is sent in rtt time here one packet is sent but here three packets are sent so this is the advantage of gbn so what are the problems of gbn so we will see that in further slides firstly we need to clear out the concept what is gbn okay so here the uh, gbr uh, gbn sender machine will wait for the data from the above layer and base equal to one and next sequence number is equal to one will be initialized when a packet is sent by the upper layer to the uh, lower layer then rdt send the conditions are checked if next sequence number is smaller than total window size plus there is a base number which we will discuss in shorter time 
then if this condition happens to, to be true then a packet will be sent in an array so this is send packet array with the sequence number so send packet 0 send packet 1 so in this way the multiple packets are being sent and when base equal to sequence number then it will start the timer and after all this next sequence number will be incremented if this condition will not be true then else refuse data so it will refuse the data from the upper layer now what will happen is that if there is a timeout happens during the transmission then it will restart the timer and send the packet and retransmission will happen so and if a packet is received and it is not corrupted means a packet is received by the receiver to the sender and it tells us that there is no corrupt packet then we will increment the base with the one so here as you can see that get ACK number so last acknowledgement number will be incremented by one and it is saved in base so base will always be one plus get ACK number and then we will stop the timer if base equal to next sequence number if this condition is not true then we will start the timer if RDT receive means it will receive the packet and there is a corrupt bit it will wait for timeout to happen then sending will be done so at the receiver side receiver side is very simple if everything is okay there is no corruption of bits and having sequence number as expected then it will extract the data from the packet and send it to the upper layer else in default case it will send the packet to the receiver so what sending is happen it will make the packet as expected sequence number what is the next expected sequence number it will make the packet with the acknowledgement and it will send the packet at default and for initialization purposes expected sequence number equal to 1 and acknowledgement is sent by the sequence number 0 ok so in this diagram you can see that whole working of GBN so packet 0, packet 1, packet 2, packet 3 are sent at one time without waiting for acknowledgement ok at the time of transmission packet 2 uh, will be lost let's say packet 2 is lost so what will happen is that as packet 0's acknowledgement is received successfully and packet 1's is also received successfully but second packet we will not receive the acknowledgement as receiver didn't receive the packet only ok so in this case the sender has to resend but till, the, uh, till then it has to wait for the timer to be end after timeout it will resend the packet 2, 3 and so on ok so packet 4, packet 5 these are being resend on so by here you can see that there is lot of duplicity of packets at the receiving end as packet 3 is received successfully and acknowledgement is sent but before that it has resent the packets packet 3, packet 4 and packet 5 so in this case duplicity of packet 3, 4, 5 will happen because of only packet 2 is lost so we have to eliminate for, uh, by any approach we have to eliminate this disadvantage by any approach so that uh, we should not have duplicity at the receiving end so firstly sliding window concept is that as we have discussed earlier that there is a window 
and maximum size which we can send at a time is n the current pointer for the base is BAC base and till then we have sent the packets so uh, the top pointer is next sequence number we can understood in some way that in one minute ah, okay so we can consider it as an stack stacks full size is n n okay and this is base let's say it is base and when the stack is growing so the uppermost pointer is next sequence number which is s when a packet is acknowledged this base will increase by 1 now b, b is equals to this one when another packet is acknowledged this b will be incremented now coming to the s if another packet is sent to the receiver this s will increase makes the possibility to increase the window so this window which is size which is of size n will increase and slides to the upward side in this way it is called sliding window so as we had discussed earlier what are the drawbacks of gbn so at time of transmission for a lost packet all subsequent packets are being forward and thus lost of transmission line so in next slide we are talking about so what is selective repeat so selective repeat is as it is like gbn but here a new concept is happening which is only those packets will be sent which are lost not all the packets after that so as you can see that let me zoom in if by the sender side packet 0 packet 1 packet 2 packet 3 are being sent at one time okay if any packet is lost so at the end of timer only that packet will be sent not all of the packets after them these packets are received successfully by the receiver so no need of transmitting again so as you can see that packet 0 so this is sliding window concept so 0123 0123 as there is no acknowledgement received by the sender till now now packet 2 send but there is no acknowledgement received here receiver window at the receiver window side packet 0 is received so sliding window will be upgraded again the packet 0 after packet 0 1 is received and acknowledgement is sent so this window will be slided upwards now as there is no acknowledgement received at the sender side uh, window is not sliding forward when acknowledgement 0 is received sliding window will be gone upwards 1 is received so sliding window will uh, further uh, become forward forwarded after that packet 2 is become uh, became lost so what will happen is that window will not be upgraded and till till then packet 2 is uh, till packet 2 timeout occurs it will not be upgraded and when packet 2 acknowledgement is received when packet 2 acknowledgement is received then only the uh, this window will be upgraded so till that time these all acknowledgement which are stored after loss happens are stored in buffer in this way slide, uh, selective repeat happens so as you can see that here only that packet is retransmitted which is being lost during normal transmission as duplicacy is avoided after getting the ACK for a particular packet sliding window will get forwarded so as you can see that only then when packet 2's acknowledgement will be 
received by the sender side only then sliding window will get forwarded so yeah so in next slide we will be talking about connection oriented service till then thank you